What I'd like to show you right now is a way to, uh, as you mix, to make sure you have a nice broad range of value. Uh, we don't want to have colors that are real similar to each other. We want to make sure that each color mix and each shape that you're painting into uh, is going to have a nice broad range of contrast. And so either that contrast is through value or through temperature. And so what you want to do, uh, say if you're going to start out with uh, monochromatic. And so we'll squeeze out some red here. And then we'll make a, uh, just a little bit of green. It doesn't need a lot, but we want to desaturate the red so we don't start with a straight from the tube red. Um, as many of you know, I will often tell you that um, uh, it's very uh, hard for me to look at colors that are, when an artist uses color and it's uh, straight from the tube, uh, a lot of times it's not as uh, sophisticated as uh, mixing colors and making them desaturated. Um, most things from nature are going to be desaturated, uh, and so um, having colors that are desaturated are going to look more lifelike, more natural, versus colors straight from the tube, which are a little more saturated and, and bold. And so always add just a little bit of the complement to whatever color you're using to just desaturate it. Uh, you can buy colors. Uh, a lot of artists buy you know, specific colors, uh, turquoises and different things like that. Uh, color tubes that are going to be desaturated already. And so if you're using colors that are fully prismatic or uh, at their, uh, you know, fully um, the intensity and the saturation is at the, the highest level, uh, it's usually good to bring it down just a little bit to desaturate it so that uh, uh, it's not so glaring. And so what we want to do is um, uh, take just a little bit of green. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, dot of blue, uh, mix a little green tone here. Not much, I don't, I don't need much, uh, but just a little bit. And then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put that right here. And I'm going to mix that into the red and just desaturate this red. You can kind of see, uh, hopefully, uh, how the, the red is uh, becoming more of a blood red. So when you're using the primary red, it looks a little rosy. And then uh, when you mix uh, a little bit of green into it, you get a little bit more of a uh, desaturated red. And so we'll take the palette knife and scrape that up here. And that'll be kind of our starting point here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this red here. Um, we'll take some white. I'm just going to squeeze some white right here. And the first color I'm going to make is I'm just going to make a kind of a, a pinky version uh, of this color. And so I'm just going to mix a few different uh, colors here in different ranges. And so we'll start that. I'm going to add a little black too to a few of the colors. So I'm going to take a little bit of black. There. And I'm going to clean this off and I'm going to make a darker tone. So what we want to do is kind of push the color around. And so I'm going to take the red here and just add just a little bit of black to it. And you'll see the color become more of a maroon tone here. So we're already kind of creating a nice uh, value contrast between the two. I'm try to get the darkest, a real nice dark red here. So there's one, two different colors here. And what we can do is just kind of do a range of it. And so I'm going to take this red here and, and you'll see how we can start creating contrast with them. We'll take some more white and I'm going to mix the white into this. And we'll make some really light color. We'll put it here so you see it. So we already have uh, these nice red tones. And if you th look at them, uh, they kind of are similar to uh, maybe some lip lip lipstick tones that you would see if you were purchasing, the, purchasing uh, that. And so I'm just going to go ahead and take this white. And you can see I can get it even lighter and still look like a red. So this is a very light tint of red, very soft kind of red here. We can look at it and determine do we have enough visual separation between these two here. And probably not. I'll, I want to make it a little bit more dramatic. And so, uh, oh, we have white here. So I'm just going to take all this white here and mix in and see if we can create more uh, contrast between the two. So hopefully there, 
This one's getting almost a fleshy tone. So we have this kind of uh, pinky, very light pinky tone here. Uh, as it gets it goes up the value scale here, we can see uh, still very light color, but it's it's definitely uh, more of a bubblegum pinky kind of color tone. Uh, here we have kind of a, almost a middle red, maybe just a little bit below uh, red, uh, uh, true red. Uh, we have a little bit darker and then a, a super dark red. And so we'll, we have that nice range here. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, let me get some more straight red. Uh, and let's just do a little bit more green to it. this and we will mix into here desaturate it desaturating is lowering the intensity so we're lowering the intensity of the color and let me let me just get this mix and then I'll show you what this is next to the, the red straight from the tube there's that and let's look at red straight from the tube And so you can kind of see the range here. Not to say this is a bad red, but I think uh, being slightly desaturated is going to look better in your compositions. You can see already here, I have a nice kind of range of colors that are popping around. We could probably get even darker. Let me get a really dark red. I'm just going to take straight black. And I'm just going to put a little bit of this into it. And so it should still identify as red. It's just going to be a real super dark. Yeah, we could probably get that much darker than that. Let's go ahead and take a little bit more black. And so we still want it to identify as red, uh, but we want it to be darker than this color here. You can see there's a, there's a little subtle differences there. You can maybe get a, a tad darker, just to create more contrast between the two. And we still want it to read as red. We could be putting green into it as well. Let me show you how to get with a dark green, uh, or with adding green to it, how uh, that would look. So that would be probably the, one of the darkest uh, red tones that you can get, the deep maroon. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so we have six, seven, seven different red tones there. Uh, but let me mix a, let me get a little bit more yellow. And let's add a little bit of blue to it to get a nice green. When you mix with the palette knife, you kind of scrape the palette paper there and you scrape the paint, the paint into itself and you'll get that nice kind of green tone there. Let's turn this back this way. And so, uh, let me show you the, the uh, let me just take this straight red here and we'll just mix this and we'll see how this compares to the other. You should be able to get that nice chocolate brown tone that, we're, that we mixed when we were doing our color charts. There you have that, ooh, chocolate, as the lady on the video said, stated. And so that would be uh, a nice range of, uh, of colors there uh, of red. So this would be the monochromatic palette. Um, and so let me just mix this green over here just to desaturate that a little bit. And we could, we could get even lighter uh, with this too. That's pretty light, but let's go Super light. Always make sure to clean the paint off your hand. And let's just take straight white. Let's mix that in there. And we should still be able to identify this as a red. 
Uh, let me put this a pinch more. It should be a super light pink. It's got a little bit of a off white there. You can see if you're comparing it to uh, the palette paper, you can see there it's just a subtle hint off of it. Just put, it might be a little bit too much. But that should be good. Let's bring that a little puddle there so you can see it. And we'll put some straight white down so we can see the difference. So there you would have your nice range of uh, values. Uh, would this count? Yes, that would count. It's a chocolate brown. It's a, more of a complementary color. These would be more of the kind of traditional monochromatic color schemes that you have here. Uh, you could make this maybe a little bit more red um, in it. Let's see. Let me just take a little bit of this. So we'll go more of a uh, brownish red here, kind of a woodsy red, just so you can identify it as red. Kind of more of a melted chocolate, you know? And so there, we're starting to see more of that red tinge into it. So at least we can identify that. That would be what we would consider a chromatic gray. Chromatic gray meaning the grayed out, you know, color tone that you achieve. It's still in the red family, but it definitely is completely desaturated to a point where it's almost a chromatic or almost canceled. The complement has almost canceled it out a bit. And so, um, but that would count. And so that would be a, a good way of creating that nice range of, of, of value contrasts with the monochromatic colors. So as you're mixing these, you want to make sure that as you're painting each individual shape that you have enough visual separation between the shapes so that you can uh, have uh, nice color contrast or value contrast in the composition. If the, if the values are too close, you know, something like this, um, what happens is all the shapes kind of blend together and there's nothing that, that kind of separates the shapes out. And so you can have a simple geometric pattern, but if you have nice contrast in value and temperature, if you're using other than the monochromatic, it will be very dynamic to the viewer. Uh, and if you, you know, have your values very close or subtle uh, differences in them, uh, it's not going to be as bold. And so that is why we want to try in this, comp in this assignment uh, to create a nice broad range of value.